Hi, I'm Philip from the HANA Academy. In this series of videos, we're looking at the XS Advanced model, which was introduced with SPS 11 of HANA. In the previous video, we created some uh, server-side HANA-based business logic that runs directly in the HANA database. And we did that using a stored procedure using SQL script. However, we might also want to might more custom uh, app server kind of uh, server side uh, business logic. Um, and that is something that we can then make available directly through uh, the web through URL calls. And that's something that we would do in our Node.js module. I remember we previously created a Node.js module, Tiny.js. And if you also remember that when we created it, if we uh, just go back to that original wizard for Node.js module, I'll uh, just put nothing in there and we'll see that there's this enable XSJS support and that is something that we did select when we did it. So this means we can use uh, this uh, classic uh, XSJS uh, syntax that you've probably quite familiar with if you worked with XS Classic uh, prior to SPS 11. So if we go to application, we've got tinyjs and then we've got lib. We already created this uh, default index xsjs and we've also got this uh, euro xso data from a previous video. So perhaps we want to make a new xsjs to do something a bit more specific. Well, maybe we'll create a folder for it. So let's create a new folder and we can call that folder country. And then what we're going to do is within that new folder, we'll create a new file. So a new file, again, we'll call that country, but this time .xsjs, and it'll give us a, an empty file. Now, the easiest way here is, let's just make that a little bit bigger, is to go to the uh, tutorial that's on SCN, uh, the one that's relevant for adding the business logic with Node.js, uh, and you'll find that the code you need is actually here. So we can just select it and copy and paste that. So there we can see the code. So what does this code actually do? Well, basically there are two input parameters that are on the URL. So they're all called name and continent. So these two new input parameters come in. They'll be effectively input parameters to our stored procedure on the HANA side. So this country XSJS is going to allow us to have a web call into that stored procedure within HANA, passing it the uh, name and continent uh, parameters. So you can see that we've got uh, a code here, a function created called save country that actually does the, uh, the calling. So once we've got the input parameters in the right format, we would typically validate them. That's been missed out because it's just a simplistic example here. Um, we then uh, do save country, putting in the two parameters that we've got. And then in save country, you can see we get a connection to our HANA database. So it's using the XS classic kind of syntax. So it's very easy uh, to work when you're working uh, in this landscape, even though it's no JS under the covers, the syntax we use uh, it can be very similar to what we already used in previous uh, uh, iterations of uh, XS. We've got um, the create country, and here we load our store procedure, tiny world, tiny DB create country. That's the one we created in the previous video, and we tested with the debugger. And uh, then we basically uh, will um, uh, actually have that run. So we make our call to it. Uh, and at the end, if everything goes well, we'll commit and close. If there's an error, we'll send that error back and we'll send it in JSON format. Now, this is intentionally a bit simplistic, the code. This is not designed for a production app. For example, we're reading uh, uh, input parameters off the URL with name and continent. Normally, you should be using HTTP post and you should be having a payload in JSON format with that, etc., etc. But just to keep it dead simple for our own uh, testing, for now, we will make it simple like this. So you can just understand how you work with WebID for HANA more than anything else. And we'll come back to this and make it uh, in, in a future tutorial to make it a little bit more uh, production uh, ready. So what we can do, and uh, now we've got that code, is we can save it. Okay, we're good. And we can, of course, run it. So we need to right mouse button on our Node.js app. And of course, we need to build it. But if we do the run as and then Node.js application, it will do a build as well. Uh, and then actually go out and run our index.xsjs. So it's now run. Now what we want to do is actually actually call our country folder and our country uh, URL. Now to save you typing, you'll find there are some examples of this in uh, here. So we're going back to the uh, blog. 
So if we go back to it and then we choose those, paste those URLs in, we can see country is the folder we made, country.xsjs, name and continent are the URL parameters. So let's try adding uh, China and Asia and let's see what happens. So we can see we get back China and Asia. That's looking really good. Uh, and there are a couple more examples in here. We've got uh, Albania and Europe and we've got Sweden and Europe. So let's just run both of those as well. Ah, in this case, I actually didn't copy it correctly. I missed out the E from Europe, so our store procedure has worked well because he's now said, no, Europe doesn't exist. So we've got a nice uh, formatted uh, error message back. So I'll just make that Europe. Now it's added it, and then the other one was Sweden. So I can just type in Sweden, and we'll run that one as well. So we can see that we've got the uh, confirmation of doing that. And what we can also do is if we go back to uh, the runtime and we select our, um, we've seen this in previous videos, our HDI container, and we go to our tables, and then we look, for example, the tiny, uh, tiny world country. If we generate a select statement, we should be able to see that the data was added. Indeed, China for Asia has been added. Um, so we can see that that data we wanted, if we scroll down, we'll find we've got Albania and Sweden added for Europe. So we can see that it's actually, everything's working fine. Now, something else we might want to do is maybe think about how we might debug this in case the code wasn't working uh, as well as we wanted. And for that, we can use the uh, Node.js debugger. Now to do that, we need to just do a little bit of setup. Um, so the first thing we do is we would right click on our tiny.js and then choose run and then run configurations and within there we would uh, insert a new one now I have a slight issue because I don't have a lot of screen real estate and there's a little bit of the screen above here that I can't see so to do that I'm just going to uh, maximize and now I can see I see a little bit more um, so I'm going to hit the plus sign to add a new one so for this one we're going to add in it as a uh, Node.js application. And we can give it a name. We can call it debug mode. OK. And we'll check the debug enabled checkbox. And at this point, we should now be able to say save it and run it. OK. Now I'll just unmaximize my screen. So if we now go back, we can see that we've got uh, the uh, debugger pane open. In fact, you can toggle that on and off with the little uh, image of a bug. And maybe we set a breakpoint. So maybe on line 21, we want to set a breakpoint here. There we go, on line 21. And now we can test our code by, for example, maybe we'll add in another country. So we can put in a country, and this time we'll put in Andorra. and try that. And this time, notice that it seems to be uh, waiting. It's pausing. And the reason for that is it's now actually running inside our debugger. You may get a message the first time saying if you want notifications. You can see it's actually running inside our debugger. And uh, we can therefore see values. We can look at values of variables, etc., etc. We can step through. We can step over. We can step to the next function. We can walk through the code as we see here. And if we want, we go to the end. We can resume the script execution. And it should run to the end. And then we see at the very end that Andorra uh, has been added. So we've got our new uh, country for the European continent. So that's a very quick uh, way of showing how you can work with the uh, debugger when you're working with Node.js uh, modules when we're using the uh, WebIDE for HANA.